Welcome back to the Jade Histories, Episode 5, Anvil Despair. Uh, so the Anvil Despair set was released in December of 1996. Uh, the frame um, was um, it's listed as blue swirls, uh, but you can kind of tell it's sort of a bluish purple color. Um, and this set introduced the Ancestor card type. Um, I'm going to read the box, the box text uh, for some story information. In the distant kingdom, in an age long forgotten, the darkest day has dawned. Black clouds hover over the Imperial Palace and lightning flashes in the sky. The Crane Champion makes a final stand at an ancient shrine against an army of Shadowlands madmen, led by his tainted intimidator. Imitator. The Dragon Clan has disappeared deep into the mountains while the lion defends the emperor from the armies of the great bear of the crab clan. The phoenix come closer every day to embracing the forbidden magics they have sworn to destroy while the unicorn begin to realize the toll the war has taken on the peasantry. And in the imperial palace, Bayushi Kachiko has seen the realization of an ancient prophecy. This is the darkest day, where hearts and souls will be tested. Those who are worthy will become legends. Those who are not will become consumed by the ancient evil who laughs on the imperial throne. So yeah, time is starting to become uh, of the essence um, as uh, certain actions have begun to happen. Now let's talk about, uh, I'm going to mention this. Um, and I should have put the slides in here, uh, but uh, where the uh, Doji Hattori makes the final stand at the ancient shrine against the army of Shadowlands Madman, led by his tainted uh, imitator. So, what does that all have to do about? Well, there was a storyline vote, and I think it was the first Imperial Herald, where... one of seven personalities was to be chosen and the personality who was chosen would be the one that the Egg of Panku was used on. Of course you remember the Egg of Panku was in both Imperial and Emerald Edition um, and it makes a copy of a personality in play. Copies their, you know, their exact game text. Um, and due to that storyline vote, there were two promos uh, that were given. Actually, let me see if I can find them. Um...
Oh, that didn't work like, like I wanted. Uh, so anyway, there were well, there was two pieces of art. There was an event called uh, the Farther You Fall, and then there was a personality called the False Hoturi. Um, now the False Hoturi uh, ended up being the version of uh, this particular version of the real Hoturi. Uh, it was just a copy. Um, they didn't really weave that very well into the basic sets, uh, but I, you know, I can understand. All right, so let's talk about cards in this set. Uh, the first one we're going to talk about is the first ever personality printed with the Colot trait, um, or the Colot master trait. This is a Kogo Kodo Kage. Um, the formerly revered sensei of the Lion Clan, uh, who is now a Kolot. Um, he's been a Kolot in hiding for a long time. Um, he is Master Tiger. Master Tiger is one of the uh, leaders of each of the sects, S-E-C-T-S, of the Kolot. Um, Master Tiger was and even beyond this even after uh, Akoto Kage um, was very the, the identity of this personality was very hidden um, so the reason why is they were uh, Master Tiger was sort of the the head honcho. He was the, the the actual crime lord that you're trying to the the, the end of the uh, the boss fight, if you will. Um, of course, uh, Kage was Totori's sensei, as he was with many of the Lion Clan uh, people, but he is the last Akodo. He was the last Dakota. Since the Turi's name has been stricken from him, and the rest of the uh, members of the Koto family have had their um, the Koto name stricken from them, he is the last Dakota. Uh, there's another card in this um, in this set we'll talk about here shortly. Um, uh, that was also part of the prophecies of. EQ. Next up we have Arrival of the Emerald Champion. Um, so this was actually a very powerful card. Um, you discard the Imperial Favor. Uh, normally you could only play this as if you were a def the defender. Or if you had, um, or if the personality that you were attacking uh, had um, uh, lower uh, lower family honor than any other player, um, five four six chi online samurai with double chi and personality of three, and it this was the was. I won't say it's the first token, this was the first, probably the first token card that was, a personality card that was played. I know there was also someone on the champion, but I don't remember if that card got the play it deserved early. Oh yeah, I guess it is important that I mention this as well. There were two starter decks for this set. One... Um, uh, it, one of the two is for the um, Taturi's army. Uh, this is the first stronghold that we'll see for that faction. The other stronghold is for Yogo Jinzo's army. Um, later on, this would be re the stronghold would be renamed, um, but. 
this is the first time you actually get to play out as the full-on bad guys and uh, as Taturi's band of Ronin next up is as the shadow falls let me pull this up a little more um, the when Hidekasada entered the Imperial Chambers, he learned the truth as Kachiko had Hantai's had Hantai's body was broken by her wile and poisons. A ripe receptacle for the dark soul of a fallen god. Um, so that sort of leads into uh, the story aspect um, Kasada is looking to take the throne he thinks he has his all of the Shadowlands uh, people behind him as he enters the throne room um, and uh this is where he uh, he falls um, as far as the card itself it, uh, no player may gain honor until the beginning of your turn two turns from now shutting off honor gains any honor gains whatsoever for two turns was absolutely massive and this card was ridiculously good um, as an anti-honor card as well as a card that basically um, you could run in dishonor to keep your opponent from digging back out of that hole that you put him in um, so uh, yeah this was a home run as far as both flavor and story and uh, mechanics base camp so this is Taturi Army's holding um, produces four gold when bringing when paying for a follower an unaligned samurai or Taturi's army personality that's a costs more and produces less normally so there's a little bit of a drawback there but it's not terrible it's Bayushi Kachiko um, this is her experienced version uh, another beautiful piece by Matthew Wilson uh, there this is also a two-parter there's another piece of art we'll see later uh, that's a connecting piece to this And, this, and the, the quote is from Togashi Okune, who is the other piece of artwork in this. So, the time of darkness is here. And you must play your part. So, what he's telling uh, Kachiko is that You cannot run away from this destiny. Um, that sh you need to stay here. You need to continue uh, poisoning the Emperor, holding his plans back for as long as possible. Um, And this is where this is basically where she finds out she is one of the seven thunders. So, who are the seven thunders? Now, the seven thunders are the personalities that are uh, our descendants um, of. Um, of the kami uh, they are human personalities um, at the uh, at the first day of thunder seven mortals were sent into the shadowlands to defeat the dark god fuling the second day of thunder 
that is coming up. Seven mortals who are descendants of the seven original Kami. Or the, there was nine, but one's dead, and the other one's Fu Ling, which we know about. Uh, is going to have to stop a reborn fooling. So who, uh, you know, who is this fooling? Um, <clears throat> when uh, at the first day, or bef <clears throat> when the kami fell from the heavens to earth, uh, one of them didn't make it to earth and died, Ryushan. Um, seven of them made it to earth. Um, that was Koto, Doji, Hida, Bayushi, Shiba, Togashi, And Shinjo. And one fell into the darkest depths of Jigoku or hell. The one that fell into there was Fuling. Bayushi Tengen doesn't look like much, but um, what he did was protect your personalities. Um, he protected your personalities if they were going to be dueled, and basically says, I'll sacrifice myself. Or in battle, you can switch the two of them and say, okay, I'm going to save this personality. He was really strong. He was reprinted in multiple arts, and... Um, was really good for this uh, uh, sort of protection role. Now we're going to talk about the um, uh, sort of new elemental what uh, items. Uh, these are non-unique items. Uh, each of them represents one of the elements and basically they're designed to help you um, play each of the elemental rings um, easier. Um, basically, they were help, they were designed to help you uh, achieve enlightenment easier. Um, there's one for each element, uh, and I think, again, they're non-unique. Uh, this one lets you put the ring into the ring of void into play. Um, you know, basically by bowing and leaving that personality bout for three turns. Now, personally, I think it's easier to play all the cards in your hand and then play the ring, but... Um, you know, to each his or her own. Uh, so we have another corrupt Shadowlands holding. This is a corrupt silver mine. Um, again, they lose three honor when playing they lose one honor and produce two gold when uh, bowed or three gold if they're a phoenix personality or phoenix uh, clan uh, corruption of the harmonies so this really shows the darkness that has come um, because of the last um, or one of the last black black scrolls we're going to be talking about here in a minute has been open. It's almost like there's this darkness that has been unleashed, and all of the Shugenja in play feel it. Obviously, they are connected to the Kami, so um, you know, almost like the force they're they're connected and when there is a major um, 
shift in it they can feel it and so uh, all shoe inches in play are bowed uh, this was a great meta card in uh, formats where you were playing a lot of Shugenja based decks aka you were playing Phoenix playing against Phoenix um, Daidoji Siembe <coughs> this was more of one of the random characters that um, was helping uh, defend the Asahina temples um, you know, he's he was fairly well costed for his day uh, two to five gold three uh, personal honor so he fit a lot of the crane metrics just a blank personality but ended up being uh, you know, good for them in those early days uh, now now we get this beautiful piece of artwork by Douglas Schuler. Uh, this is where this is the piece of artwork that when I think of um, characters in my L5R this is the type of artwork that I like uh, Daidoji Uji here look, reminds you of Shredder from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles uh, you know he's got this he's got the spikes uh, on his shoulder you know shoulder pads um, this just the way the helm the uh, kabuto is made uh, obviously doesn't have the that on the um, the arm plates <clears throat> but it just reminds you so much of it um, um, yeah Uji was such a badass character um, And this artwork sort of epitomized that, and this is why um, Uchi, you know, was known within the you know, the game circles as Shredder. Uh, disfavored. Uh, this was a um, this was a fantastic card at messing up um, opposing um, honor or dishonor decks. Uh, that lets you, you know, shut off them lo lobbying for the favor or taking political action for the rest of the game. Um, a beautiful control card. Now we have reached. Um, so you'll notice the name of this is the Doom of Fooling. Um, this is the eleventh Black Scroll. Um, the Doom of Fooling is um, an interesting name for this one. <clears throat> um, the reason that it's interesting is because when this scroll is open, the, m the majority of the power of fooling has been released and is now uh, embodying the mortal body of Hantai the 39th. Now when we get to Time of the Void uh, when we see the um, conclusion of this story arc uh, you will see why this uh, scroll is aptly named uh, drum of the wa drum of water so um, this is another um, another one of those that lets you s sneak in um, uh, or put a ring into play without having to completely fulfill its uh, requirements this one you simply have to destroy an opposing army and put a terrain into play the other one you have to uh, destroy a terrain play a terrain and destroy the opposing army or province so 
this one's supposedly a little easier. Um, duty to the Empire. Um, uh, another anti uh, honor card uh, shuts off honor victories, political uh, and uh, or being able to play do political actions. Uh, if there's any Shadowlands cards in play, no matter who controls them. Of course, this is supposed to be the uh, the arm of the now corrupted uh, Hantai Emperor. Golden Obi of the Sun Goddess. Um, three Chi bonus, unique weapon. Um, if the person is about to be destroyed, you destroy the Obi instead. Uh, bow one opposing Shadowlands card once per battle. So obviously Golden Obi is supposed to be um, a gift from Lady Amaterasu, Lady Sun, uh, and therefore has the properties of of uh, opposing the Shadowlands. Now, Hammer of Earth. So this lets you put the Ring of Earth into play. Hitty Yakumo Oni. So, Yakumo is still under the corrupting effects of the uh, claw, the Oni's claw that's on his hand, uh, on his arm. Uh, and you can see um, this is the experienced version of that that Oni, um, who's only gotten stronger as Yakumo has gotten stronger. Now, this is an interesting character, one that we will see recurring throughout the game's history, Togashi Kokuchin. Um, it's a corrupted, tattooed personality of the sh of the dragon, but he also has Shadowlands. Um, Kokuchin has his own machinations on. Um, on the uh, domination of Rokugan. Um, and he's going to come up with some very interesting um, items as we move forward in the story. Uh, uh, Isawa Osugi. So this uh, this is the actual Anvil of Despair print version. One Force 4 Chi 0. Uh, iron Requirement 8 Gold 4 Personal Honor. Uh, Prodigy Shugenja. Any effects that give the Shadowlands Traitor are cancelled and all effects negated. Osugi may not have more than one spell attached at any one time. Spells being attached to Osugi have their gold cost reduced to zero. Yeah, let me read that last line again. Spells being attached to Osugi have their gold cost reduced to zero. You get to play one spell for free on Osugi. But you can only ever have one spell. Now, players of the game know that um, this... Uh, she was a little too good being a non-unique that did that that you could proclaim for eight uh, you could proclaim and gain four honor and play whatever spell you wanted on her for free that she was going to repeatedly use um, um, so eventually they um, I don't know if they issued an errata at that time, uh, or they waited and printed it during, um, when they reprinted it during, uh, I want to say it was Jade Edition. Uh, they corrected it and added the unique trait. Isawa Suke. So, this is the last master um, that... Um, of the five 
well, I have the four actually. See, uh, Asawa Ka Kaede decided that she was not going to partake in the um, opening of the Black Scrolls. The other four masters decided to open the scrolls. Of the ones that were uh, that opened Black Scrolls, Suke was by far the one that fell fastest to the corruption. Um, and this led to um, a devastating battle um, on the Day of Thunder. Uh, involving four of the five elemental masters of the Phoenix. Kikita Shinjin, or Shijin, excuse me. Um, <laughs> so this guy was by far one of the most recognized crane personalities in the in the physical game. Um, the six honor requirement meant that you could not uh, bring him into play on the uh, on turn one or if you did it would have to be a because crane started at five in those days three personal honor was very good um, reaction about immediately after one of your personalities has been destroyed you gain honor equal to the personality's current personal honor um, this, along with another card in this set, ended up being the pieces to a rapidly fast uh, crane honor deck. Um, it is, um, it, it can be very ridiculous how fast this deck can go. Um, Normally, you have to depend on your opponent destroying your personalities to be able to use this ability. But in this set, they gave you a way to blow up your own. Uh, Kusate Airu. Uh, so this is a very humongous Oni, you can even tell, because you can see the buildings on his, on his back. Um, immediately after a battle resolution phase in which I ruin the province it was defending were destroyed you may destroy any one province of the attacker lose 15 honor you may perform this action even if this was your last province so, this hulking mass is basically, um, if I'm defending a province and my opponent won, I get to blow up one of their provinces. And it doesn't matter, typically when the last province is destroyed, the game is over. But this gives it a sidestep that lets you blow up a province an opponent controls as well. So, technically, that means that the game could end in a draw, which, to my knowledge, was never possible before this card was printed. Uh, Kirogen. So, this is a enforcer or bodyguard that is uh, there to protect um, Yogo Jinzo. Um, Yeah, I can't even tell. You can see the top half of him. You can't even tell. Is this bottom half all rock? You know, what is this? Um, I do not want to meet this guy in a dark alley. Um, so in this set, this is the first card that is designed to um, try to protect you from 
the major honor loss cards that they have printed in sets before it. Lies, Lies, Lies was designed to, uh, to help you against those decks in the field. Um, you get to gain a honor if you control uh, no cards that cost you an honor loss and Shadowlands, Ninja, or Colot cards. But this honor could will only gain you back up to your starting honor. So basically, if somebody went um, a breach of etiquette on turn one, on on their turn one, um, if you have a lies, lies, lies in your hand, the next you know the next turn you can basically play this and get you, get you back to the ability of being able to play your guys because in this era of the game you were um, SOL if you couldn't uh, I think it's pretty cool the goblins hiding behind the kimono uh, mantle of fire again this was another card that allowed you to cheat the ring into play uh, this one, if you win the duel, you can put the ring into play from your hand instead of having to do the other. Uh, Miyako. Uh, so this is Totori's bodyguard. Um, uh, Yojimbo. I guess um, probably if they were redesigned today, they'd be considered Yojimbo. night battle so this was you know like I said before there were a lot of terrains that were never played in the early part of the game this is one that actually was because it had the effect of uh, being an additional cop additional copies of deadly ground uh, where no player can take an action unless they could with the difference of uh, as long if they had a Shugenja or Shadowlands personality in play, they could continue uh, playing actions. Which meant you could play this, lock your opponent out from playing stuff, and then you, if you're playing one or both of these, um, could continue to play those actions and get caught back up. Only no Tadaka. So this is where um, the Phoenix sort of um, dug even deeper into the Shadowlands um, taint. Um, so they cast a spell that required the blood of one of their of one of their personalities which in doing so um, created an Oni that's tied to that person and in this case it's tied to Tadaka as this Oni grows in power it feeds on uh, Tadaka's uh, power um, so if uh, you'll notice here if it's destroyed it gives it shrinks all the Phoenix Clan Shugenja so it inevitably hurts them as well um, uh, Otaku uh, Baikin uh, we we basically shortened it and, and called him uh, Bacon um, he basically is there to uh, create token after token. Uh, he, he does not have the cavalry trait. Uh, many of the men of the Otaku family, Otaku family, um, were the infantry and horsemasters. They were not uh, the battle maidens. Were the ladies, and they were the ones that were the cavalry of the Otaku family. Rattling Conjurer. So, 
uh, rattlings were you'd seen some in followers but you didn't see many in personalities the Nizumi as they were called were one of the five races that were on Rokugan before uh, the Kami fell um, uh, we're going to hear more from the Nizumi as we move forward this becomes an important uh, constructed card for for more than one deck in the game's history moving forward um, uh, and this is one of the early appearances of a personality for it refugees was uh, an interesting card um, it um, is an absent, which means it can be played without presence, battle ability that targets personality without followers and moves them home. They have the ability uh, from this to pay one gold to attach a one force um, Ashigaru follower to that personality. Now, this was crucial in helping slow down some of the um, aggressive decks that did not play um, followers and in the early days of the game that was most decks uh, it was also very good at allowing you um, to slow down uh, the cavalry of the unicorn or the bl you know the box blitzing of the lion clan uh, this this personality, uh, Shinjo Yasoma, has um, is a tactician. M most of the tacticians that we've seen to this point um, have been lion. Uh, with I think Yasoma, no, not Yasoma, Yokatsu it was also a tactician. Uh, but this is the this one had a unique ability. I'll let you bow him in a battle and target a terrain there and take control of it. Now in its day it wasn't that, you know, taking control of a deadly ground or a night battle is not going to do much. However, you know, taking control of, say, uh, um, A corrupted ground or a um, uh, contentious terrain gives all your personalities plus one force uh, would be, would be very powerful so as far as an ability it was pretty interesting even if it wasn't didn't see a lot of play for that time period now we're going to talk about ancestors Ancestors are designed to look like a follower. Um, they had a a greenish border. Um, uh, so this is Shirio no Kakita. Um, now there was a whole series of these. I, I didn't put any more than just the one because many of the ancestors were not played. Um, there were a few that saw play from this point until the point in the game. I think it was at the end of the gold arc um, that were played, but there were very few that made it. Um, so basically this attached to a personality. It attached like a follower. The difference was that you had to bow the personality to attach the ancestor. Um, the ancestor could not be targeted by cards that targeted followers, even though it was attached like one. Many of them had interesting effects. So this this one is designed to be uh, the Kikita ancestor. Um, to be like the ancestor of the original Kami of Kakita. 
and so this ability was once per duel the personality may focus with two focus cards instead of one when focusing um, which is insane by the way so I challenge you to a duel you focus I focus twice you focus I focus twice and then they can't win um, I think the premise was pretty cool but it 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 didn't really it didn't really see enough there wasn't enough play to, to say that these cards were worth it next up is we have another um, political card slander uh, so you could play this in response to somebody uh, bringing a personality into play um, to uh, negate their honor gain for the personality a very shrewd and um, uh, scorpion like thing to do Shifting Wind, uh, so you'll notice here that the, this piece of artwork was done by Mark Tedden. Um, of course, many people know Mark Tedden from his work with On Magic the Gathering. Um, no, I'm sorry, Shifting Wind, it's Stifling Wind. Good Lord, sorry guys. Um, uh, so it it lets you either bow a follower or bow a personality with no unbowed followers attached. It was basically a control card. Um, it's uh, more known for its art than anything, but in the early days, spells were. It was very difficult to get spells that were playable. Um, they either had to be. <laughs> They were either really good or they were either really good, really niche, or terrible. Uh, Takawan is um, one of um, Toturi's lieutenants. Um, he basically gives a blanket bonus to all of your Toturi's army personalities. Tapestry of Air. So this is another uh, another card. Um, I'll let you play uh, a ring for uh, for less. Ah, now we come to the darkest day. Um, all personalities in play with personal honor above two are bowed. So anybody with three personal honor or greater is bowed. Now all begin to realize the meaning of the prophecy. When the last Akoto falls, so falls the last Hantai. And of course, the last Akoto to fall is Kage. Now, the face of fear, so. Again, this was more, um, this was pretty interesting. So typically what Fear did, did uh, in the early part of the game was you target a unit and you bow, if it has followers, you bow any followers that were equal to or less than the force, than the uh, focus value, sorry, the force of uh, the f you targeted a unit and you bowed all followers that had a force less than the fear number. If the personality had no followers, you bowed the personality if it was less than the fear number. This allowed you to also affect the personality when you do this so you can bow li literally everything and in those days if the personality was bowed no follower attached to that personality contributed its force to the unit's force which meant it com was completely devastating
there is no hope. Obviously, this is the way it felt, uh, the story felt at this point, as we have this evil god who has embodied the uh, the emperor. Uh, we've got the Shadowlands that's taking over everything. So, there is no hope. And uh, so, this shut down any festival events from ever resolving. Obviously, the festival of the event that it didn't want to resolve was the Irish Festival because that destroyed all Shadowlands personalities. Yeah, I've run this a few times. The Return of Fuling. All players have their rightmost province destroyed. Each player may elect to renounce their ability to win through an honor victory to prevent that province from being destroyed. Unless they are already unable to win through an honor victory. Such as Scorpion, Naga, and Jinzo's army. So, so this was basically... Is either a free province or a way to keep your opponent from winning via an honor victory. So against honor decks, they lost, had to lose their province. Against um, any of the three clans that can't win by honor at the time, um, they had to lose the province too. And if um, and everybody else, it was like, I don't care about winning through honor. Um, the return of Fu Ling, obviously. Um, he's now embodying the, uh, the Hantai. And now we get to Yogo Junzo's army. Five province strength, zero gold production, negative 19 honor. Uh, you cannot win an honor victory. Your cards are immune to fear. Your personalities may not swear fealty. Um, you cannot take political actions or actions that will cause another player an honor loss. You may not ally or have allies. So there's a lot of restrictions on, on these guys. Uh, you can't win through an honor victory. You cannot lose uh, the game via dishonor. You can't gain or lose honor, period. Um, you uh, couldn't lobby for the Imperial favor. You couldn't play any political actions in your deck. Uh, the allying or have allies, that's a multiplayer function. Uh, basically, you can invite other players to, to help you out. And you you couldn't offer help to an, to somewhere somewhere else. Uh, bow, the, uh, bow the Stronghold when bringing Shadowlands card into play to reduce its gold cost by four. Um, so obviously, with zero gold production, you had to play the Corrupt Holdings with this stronghold. Um, um, you, you could play um, the Festering Pit of Fooling because it's a Shadowlands card. You can reduce the gold cost. Uh, and then all your Shadowlands cards. To do what we must. Um, uh, so this is the card I spoke about talking about uh, Kakita Shijin and uh, being able to blow up on your personalities um, you're basically destroying um, your unit and any one opposing unit with total force less than or equal to the force of the unit you destroyed plus uh, my um, personality's personal honor. Add two to the force of this action if it's being performed by crane personality. 
So basically, I'm going to sacrifice my life to blow something else up. Um, very protective, very crane, and between those two cards, it made uh, crane on a rocket uh, very formidable. Here is our experience, Togashi Yokune. It's standing above, um, or standing on this wall above uh, Bayashi Kachiko. Um, so Yukune is sort of the um, interesting personality in all this. He knows all this stuff about all these people and all these things. Um, there's a revelation coming about Togashi Yokune that we'll have to explore um, within the next uh, few episodes uh, but he's very important to the uh, end of the story cycle uh, to the last man this was a card that was very uh, was very interesting um, because it was one of the first cards that allowed you to actually feel like you, even if you lost a battle, you could at least f force more damage on your opponent. Up until this point in the game, if you lost a battle, every card that you lost at the battle was destroyed. Um, and sometimes that sacrifice was worth it, but at other times it felt like, you know, the, the attacker should have to pay some sort of price and it's one of the main problems that I that I ever saw about the original game was the fact that we didn't have enough cards that basically said I can um, uh, I need a I need a way to inflict enough damage on my opponent to where it's gonna take them a long time to come back now I typically played Mantis. Uh, I like shooting things, so I'm going to inflict a ton of damage on you if you're attacking me. The problem is I'm usually the one attacking you, uh, and going to make it very difficult uh, for you to keep guys on the field. But we needed more attrition type based cards that were not just in battle actions, and this is one of those that really hits that that I think that's one of the one of the few things that um, that could have been cleaned up in the game uh, Taturi's army so uh, uh, six for, uh, promise strength four gold production three starting honor ignore honor requirements when bringing uh, 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 when you're bringing online human personalities or to turn Turi's army personalities to play. Uh, you may not have more than two Shadowlands cards in your deck. So this whole thing about two Shadowlands cards, it would let you uh, taint yourself but not corrupt yourself. Um, typically this was used for um, um, There was a, uh, a Kodo Kodaigo, who was a Shadowlands personality that was Taturi's army um, from a previous set. It's forbidden knowledge, I would believe. You, if, if it, um, this was mainly done for flavor reasons, but he's one of the personalities that you're thinking of for as far as this goes. Uh, you'll notice that one of these flags is the Dragon Clan. Um, and it almost looks like that other one is the Lion Clan? Question mark? And now we have uh, Totori. Um, 15 gold was expensive. 6-5. Uh, um, he shrinks while he's dishonored. Not really a surprise there.
count, being able to cancel actions was really good, but bowing, uh, bowing your him well like six force was kind of ugh. Um, still, it really showed the type of person that he was. He was a tactical genius. Uh, Sukuro was uh, basically one of the uh, undead generals of the of the Shadowlands. Um, just a, you know, this artwork is just, is just freaky, but it does really sum up the, uh, the Shadowlands. Ah, uh, Yodin. So, this monk was, uh, was very important to Enlightenment decks. Um, because once you triggered, um, you, pl you played a ring that you've success, that you were able to successfully do, he lets you search for the next one. And, um, uh, this was fantastic because now it lets you, well, lets you concentrate on, I can go from one ring to the next ring to the next ring. Um, you didn't have that before. And this last personality, um, even though it's listed as Kom uh, Komoto, um, it says here Mantis Clan. Um, um, alphabetically, the, uh, the card's name was changed later to say Yoritomo Komoto. Um, but um, he is a, um, at the time, he's an unlined samurai who uh, is of the Mantis clan that has sworn to help Taturi's army. He has a tactician trait. He can have one, only one follower, but that follower gains plus two, plus two force while attached to him. Um, the Mantis are a, obviously, you know, we spoke of this before, is a minor clan. Um, in the seas of Rokugan who have been um, gaining all this wealth for being mercenaries help defend the crane lands um, and this gentleman who's you know latching onto Taturi's army and helping that uh, the Ronin gang of uh, Taturi you know fight off whatever um, they're going to be important later the time has come I'll thank you for watching we'll see you the next time until then there is no escape from the tiger